Aquarius, hello there, my beautiful friends. We're going to do your general tarot reading for mid-June 2024. Thank you so much for joining me today. You know I appreciate each and every single one of you. So let's get right down to business, as always, and start you off with an oracle card here, just so we could dip our toes into energy and see what's happening for the lovely Aquarians. Hope you're all doing fabulous and fantastic, my friends. Let's get it going here, my guides and spirit team. What do we got for Aquarius? In mid-June, it's Gemini season. What energies, messages, insights, all that good magical stuff. And yeah, we're just going to take a real quick look at this first card. Then we'll get into the full reading itself. At the very end, I'll pull you a bonus card from the Shadowland Tarot. Just to see what might be in the shadows or what shadow work you can lean in on, which is always interesting. So let's get it going here. Let's rock and see what we got for Aquarius in mid-June, please. Let's get one card out here. Just so we can... Take a little peek. There it is. Nice and quick. Oh, I haven't seen her in, a, in quite a while. So the lady holding the hourglass, huh? So the construct and concept of time itself. Okay, which, I mean, that's pretty big. Something to really discuss and talk about. But it could be affecting a lot of you in different ways, right? For some of you, this could be really, really positive. For some of you, it could be a little frustrating. Now, before we fully dive into that, if you're new here, I'll be speaking about the June subscriber surprise towards the end. So you might want to check that out. Also, if you could kindly illuminate that like button by tapping it right on its third eye, you know, I'd greatly appreciate it. But enough of the promo into the reading. Let's talk a little bit more about this card. So we see this lovely lady. Looks like she's wearing a hood. She is holding an hourglass. The sand is slipping through all the way down through her fingers. So, like, I mean, like the days of our lives intro years back, right? But when I see this card, I just think of time itself. So for some, and I'll explain the different ways that this card could be affecting some of you. Some Aquarians, maybe you're uh, in a waiting pattern for something, a holding pattern, like let's wait and see, let's see how this turns out. Some of you might be forced to wait on something when this card is here. I always say that time affects people in different ways because for, you know, how some days it really drags by, some days it goes really quick. It's like, okay, well, it's already 2024. I feel like it's the year 2001. Like time moves in funny ways. Okay, so for some of you, whether this is a waiting game or you feel like time is flying, there's something with the concept of time itself that could be affecting a lot of the Aquarians in this time. Okay, like hopefully it's not like, oh, I'm running out of time or something like that. We're just going to put her down and you know the different ways time could affect you. Let's see if it plays within the reading itself. And I would say, yeah, the first card, it doesn't make or break the reading. It's just a footnote. But let's get you three tarot cards in the upright. Then we'll get into that intuitive juiciness. There is something here, the, uh, the Saturnian concept of time, right? I know some people say that time is an illusion, but, I mean, we are within that illusion one way or another. Let's get it going. And, yeah, while we shuffle this up and get ready to go, let's talk about last week's reading. It was titled Exciting News Incoming, so I'm really hoping that happened for a lot of you. I've been feeling very positive energy, like, on the horizon for Aquarius for a few weeks now. So just know that energy could still like bleed through for a couple of weeks that there could be really nice things coming in. So I'm, I'm hoping that does happen because there could be wins and victories in all different areas of life. But we're going to see what shows up this week. As you know, energy is very fluid. It's never set in stone. So only take this how it hits for you because we could be seeing your vibe or someone else's. Let's get it going. Three for Aquarius. What do we have in mid-June, please? Guys, what do we got? Thank you. Okay, we do have the world card on to the next chapter, so to speak, which could be a really, really good thing. Now, I don't get too nervous about the world. Like, yeah, it could be a closeout, and we'll go much more in depth. This is a card that's not very simple on its face, right? Okay, the yeah, six of wands, really nice, really good positive energy. So this could be a good ending of some sort. That is very possible. Let's get a couple more, or one more, then we'll talk about it. What is happening here? Thank you. Wow. Empress. Okay, Aquarius. So it seems like we're piggybacking off the energies we've been having for a couple weeks. I'm going to try my best not to get too overly optimistic. We're going to be realistic about all this, right? So let's go through. I'll give you some of the classical meanings and archetypes and we'll get into that juicy intuitive stuff. Yeah, first look, first glance. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Two major arcana, we have some fire, we have this Venus type of energy here. I'm getting very optimistic so far, but it's something we're going to have to keep an eye on for a portion of you. The next cycle you're moving into has so much possibility. 
but we're going to go through piece by piece because I feel like there's a lot of big archetypes at play and on the surface it looks really good position number one and you know let's just work our way through the world card and I always say this is one of the more complex cards in the whole entire tarot deck now if we were to give it a simplistic meaning it is the last of the major arcana so it could represent endings and sometimes it does oftentimes it does but not every ending is a bad one that's what I always mention whenever this card is here the world is not the Ten of Swords. The world is a culmination where something builds up. It builds up, builds up, builds up, and then it's like a tree blooming. That's how I see the world. I mean, and once again, I know I'm an optimistic reader, but I just see it as like a tree blooming. So it's really nice. Um, we'll see what the clarifier says, because this could also be karmic energy, although it does represent a page turning or moving into a new chapter. There could be metamorphosis or change at play whenever this is in the mix, or it could be big picture thinking since it is karmic. Okay, so we'll see whether you're moving into a brand new cycle of life where something is building up, something is building up, building up, building up, and we're going to see how it goes. And from the information I have so far, Aquarius, I'm liking what I'm seeing. Now, yes, we still have to clarify, of course, but every card has a positive and, and challenge, even the ones that lean positive. But position number two, we have the Six of Wands. Lovely. Complete and total victory. That's what this card represents. So you see that person, it looks like they're marching in a parade. To me, this is a card of victory, public notoriety, getting some spotlight, gaining recognition for the good things you've done, getting kudos. And it's like, okay, I appreciate you, Aquarius. Like, it's really nice. I often see this when people are being recognized or when they receive awards and stuff like that. So it's a really nice energy. Or it could just simply mean something going your way. The Six of Wands does have a shadow side as well, though, because it, it could connect to Leo, possibly. That is like the yin to your yang in the zodiacal wheel. But this card can represent the ego, okay? Or it's somebody you're connected to might have an inflated ego when this card shows up. Like someone feels like they cannot lose or they refuse to lose, right? Like a sore winner even. So we'll see how it all plays out. Once again, I don't go negative until a clarifier tells me so, but we'll see. But from judging what I'm seeing, like the world into the Six of Wands, it's like, okay, well, yeah, this could be a change or it could be a chapter moving and it's like a good one, especially when we have boom the goddess herself showing up here at the back end of your spread we have the empress now for a portion of you this could represent a taurus or a libra both of those signs are connected to venus and she is venus energy here and i love her energy um again she's the goddess she represents nature a connection to nature revitalizing your energy in nature itself spending time out there uh, she's full of abundance and potential the rewards and blessings from the universe are encapsulated within this card so it's absolutely lovely we think of fertility we think of possibility we think of mother figures as well when this card is in the mix now where do we get to the challenge of the empress when she is all those beautiful energies sometimes the empress could be a little too much to handle okay or it's like uh either it's either a stubborn energy where it's like this energy is not progressing it's not doing what i want it to do or it's like just too much to handle so i want to see how this all plays because the empress energy could be a little claustrophobic if that makes sense so i want to dive deeper on all of it let's jump in and clarify I mean, so far so good though. Don't I don't want everyone to get it twisted just because I'm mentioning the the challenging aspects that that's definitely it. I mean, these cards are innocent until proven guilty, right? Well, let's shuffle it up here. And yes, this is where I go intuitive with the message, which means I just tell you how it feels to me. So feel free to do further research or rely on your base knowledge of tarot, because as you know, every single reading is about the reader's interpretation, and I'm just giving you mine. Let's go in on that world card. Oh, and yes, if you're a reader yourself, please feel free to play along. That's why the box is here. If you're feeling any messages you want to give to Aquarius, you can drop it right in the comments. I don't mind at all. Okay, world time. Why is it here for my Aquarians, please? Thank you. Judgment. Yeah. All right, you guys, so there is something that's building up. Okay, there is a situation, and I don't necessarily feel like it's rough, and we'll need to explore it as it goes further, but judgment is a card of action. It's a card of change. It's a card of transformation. It is karmic as well. So I feel a couple of different messages here, 
and I feel like it's one or the other. For a portion of you, there is a karmic cycle that has ended. There is a karmic cycle that is closed. It's like, okay, case closed. I don't know why I keep using all these like law terms. That, that doesn't normally happen. But it's like, yeah, case closed. That cycle's done. It's closed. It's over and done with. So for a lot of you, it could be a karmic cycle that's already closed off or ended. But I feel, again, with the with the world and this judgment card, the karmic energy is like it's building up, it's building up, it's building up. That something is just going to, boom, shift and change in a really, really powerful way. Now, let's talk about judgment a little more. It has the Archangel Gabriel, the messenger on there. Um, sometimes this could represent, if not transformation and change, it could be somebody taking action, making moves. This is an explosive type of energy. So yeah, sure, could something change very suddenly or unexpectedly? Absolutely, especially with this energy I'm seeing building up. So I feel like the main thing, two things with this alignment here in the front end is one, there could be a closed out karmic ending or cycle. And it's like, okay, chapter closed, on to the next. Like it's giving me that vibe. Or there is something that's building up and building up and building up and it's going to just, unexpectedly shift and change it's like okay all right well it hit a breaking point boom now it shifts out let's keep moving over because again i'm not feeling like anything that's making me nervous or on edge here which is a good thing it just feels intense that's the one thing i will say but let's see what the six of wands has why is the six of wands here thank you Death card, another karmic card. So we are not escaping this karmic energy, my friends. But it again, it feels good. Okay, I can't let go of this energy. Now, some of you might be connected to the Scorpio when the death card shows up. That is not a card to be nervous about or afraid about. And it shares a lot of similarities to these cards that we've previously seen. Death can, again, represent an ending. So it's like I have two positive results are two positive endings here so again this could be like double up win after win like it's really good stuff now death is all about transformation you see what i mean it's a different flavor of the same thing we've been seeing this karmic energy and this cycle changing um it is natural for us as human beings which most of us are right to be a little nervous or apprehensive about change um this could be spirit asking you to embrace what's to come that's the big thing I'm picking up here. Like for some reason with the six of wands, a death card, it's like, listen, embrace it, embrace it, go with the flow and enjoy it. Like that's the vibe this has given me. Um, don't try to fight it. Okay. That's another thing. Like don't try to fight against these energies. Just let them do what they do. That's, I mean, take these messages for what they're worth. Like maybe this will make sense in a, in a week or two, but I feel like there's an energy that you just need to let it run its course and work with it, not against it. Let's keep moving forward. Still, again, though, although there's energies of karmic energy and things changing and things ending, they're both positive, okay, which is intriguing to say the least. But let's go in on, on the Empress and see what she has to say. Notice we have five cards out. Four of them are major arcana, powerful, powerful stuff. So why is the Empress here for Aquarius? Thank you. All right, Three of Pentacles, really, really nice really really nice i like this for a lot of you especially in the career realm business realm there is beautiful energy here around money in general physical abundance in the material world really really nice and the way this is coming through is like massive blessings just pouring in and i really really do like it for some of you this might be a reading that you need right because i don't know what every single aquarius is going through right now Maybe some of you have recently been through a really difficult time or things have been rough or nothing's ever really been easy for some of you. And I mean, that is very common. Uh, but with what I'm seeing here, what I see coming up, this is like a cause for optimism for sure. Now let's talk about it. The Three of Pentacles is a card of teamwork. So when I see it, I think of career, the people we work alongside, the people we work with. It is a group dynamic, of course. It represents artistry and dedication and working hard towards something. So when I see it under the Empress, whether it's spirit rewarding you in one way or another, or bringing these blessings in for a lot of you, this could be amazing energy towards money and career. So I would claim this for sure because it's looking really, really nice. Um, and I know that's where it starts getting a little specific in the message, but like this is big picture with all these karmic and major arcana. This is like big picture energy for the most part. 
Um, there is something around assistance, so I feel like I need to deliver a message to a lot of Aquarians of uh, what you give, you'll receive, just like with the karmic energy. But the help that you put out there, the energies you put out there into the world, just know for some reason it's going to come back to you quicker. So Spirit wants you to like be a light in this world. And I know a lot of Aquarians are humanitarian, and Spirit's asking you to embrace this, this energy that you're coded with. Okay, I mean, this is a very unique reading, but let's go through and do a quick recap. Um Big picture energies, that's for sure. Then we'll get into the shadow card. But if you look at position number one here down in the box, we have the world clarified by judgment. Half of this spread is all the same archetype for the most part. So this could be a karmic cycle that has ended or closed off already where it's like, okay, that's done. That, that cycle's done. That's in the past. But for a portion of you, I did feel like something's building up, building, building up, and it's going to unexpectedly shift and change. Okay, And it is dealing with just like progressing. Like something has to progress. It has to move forward. Moving into the center, we have the Six of Wands with the Death card. Again, Spirit wants you to go with this energy as opposed to fight it. Like go with the flow. Don't fight against it. Work with it as opposed to against it. Embrace it. Okay. And even though there's an apprehension here, Spirit wants you to go along. Okay. On to the back end, we have the Empress with the Three of Pentacles. A lot of you have amazing energy around material abundance coming in. Uh, whether it is a reward. Another thing I was picking up is Spirit wanting you to do some some work in this world. Put some energy out there so it will come back to you like tenfold. This is beautiful. So blessings and abundance, really good stuff. Please take a screenshot, Aquarius. Let's see what's in the shadows for you. Okay. Shuffle it up one time, my guides. Let's see what Aquarius has in the shadows. That was a unique reading, that's for sure. But what do we have? And yes, I always like to pull one shadow card at the very end just to see whether it's something within you or something you don't quite see. Shadow cards don't always have to be a challenge. They could be a good thing. Okay, let's get you one. And yes, if you've made it to this point in the reading, please feel free to uh, check out channel memberships. I'll put a link for it in the comments below. It's a beautiful way to support the channel, and I have much love for all my channel members. Okay, what do we got? What is in the shadows for Aquarius? Quick, there we go. Knight of Cups, silky smooth energy starting to flow in here, even in the shadows. For a lot of you, the Knight of Cups, it could be a water sign that you're connected to where their energy still has like some sort of effect. But if that's not the case, the Knight of Cups is Prince Charming energy, very silky smooth. Like I said, good talker type of vibe. And when we see him in the shadows, it could represent some sort of conversation that you have coming up or someone hitting you up out of the blue, especially with this as a shadow card. Um, another portion of you, yeah, there may, might be some sort of romantic connection you're still affected by energetically. We're not going to just cling to that message alone because I feel like the reading itself was such big picture energy. We don't have to like minimize it to just being about one thing. But the Knight of Cups is good times ahead. Remember, Knights are all about taking action, things moving. And with all that energy I saw within the spread itself, all that major arcana and karmic energy, this is another little hint, another little tip for us that the vibes that are coming along are looking good. And they have been for a couple weeks for you. Like the last several weeks, the energy has been looking really nice. And something's building up and something big is coming in. Okay, and I'm liking what I'm seeing. So Aquarius... Please take a screenshot of that as well if you'd like. That's what I have for you this week, my friends. Don't click away just yet, though. I'm going to give you the details of the June subscriber surprise. If you would like to book a personal reading with me, my digital calendar is open on mastermetaphysics.com. So go ahead and check that out. And if you got your name in for the May subscriber surprise, the winners will be announced after this weekend's readings. But for the June subscriber surprise, I'm giving away two copies of one of my favorite decks, the Gilded Tarot Royale. So if you'd like to get your name in for that, it's two simple things. As always, my friends, first, you must be subscribed. And second, let me know down in the comments if you could snap your fingers and visit anywhere in the world right now. Where would it be? You'll be entered to win. And at the end of the month, the winners will be announced in my community tab. As always, my friends, much love. And I'll see you soon.